I think it's jealous, Mother. Hello friends, welcome back to Fire, and today I want to talk about something slightly controversial but also very necessary to the fans left behind by Raised by Wolves. Our favorite popular sci-fi series was cancelled after two very successful seasons on HBO Max and left behind some major cliffhangers. Many fans are still wondering what went wrong, especially after the attempts made by Father, actor Abu Bakr Salim, in a series of tweets that implied the show may be renewed by another network. Fans rallied and petitions were signed, but alas, the amazing show wasn't picked up by anyone at all. So what was the reason? Why was this beloved show canceled at the height of its popularity? Well, I think I feel my dragon senses tingling, and it's time to talk about the giant serpent in the room. HBO made some major changes over the past few months when Warner Brothers Media merged with Discovery, and they essentially canceled a bunch of shows on multiple networks including HBO Max, TNT, TBS, and CNN. This included Raised by Wolves being canceled despite being one of the top shows on HBO Max since the platform's launch. I talk about this in more detail in another video linked here, but I believe there was another reason this affected Raised by Wolves, and that was a little show called House of the Dragon. House of the Dragon is a spin-off to the very successful HBO show Game of Thrones. Shortly after the poorly rated end to season 8 of the hit fantasy show, its prequel story was announced as a straight-to-series order. HBO made the big decision to expand on the world of Game of Thrones, building it to become something like the Star Wars or Marvel universes, which are both very lucrative for Disney+. Don't get me wrong, the Thrones fandom was a packed house and has held out for this new series. But we cannot ignore the striking coincidences that House of the Dragon and Raised by Wolves had in common, which I believe actually led to Raised by Wolves cancellation. Namely, a giant serpentine creature and a divine feminine figure. Two things which historically have been victims of a huge effort to suppress what they actually represent. If you are a fan of these shows, you'll know exactly what I'm talking about. Whether it was Thrones or House of the Dragon, we are going to get an embodied dragon queen, a nearly perfect and rare specimen of humankind, apart from normal men. We saw this in Daenerys Targaryen, the last of her name, and the blood of old Valyria, who were the blood of the dragon. The Targaryens in House of the Dragon already speak of being closer to gods than men due to their relationship with dragons. Men equate the power of the dragons to the power of the Targaryens, and we now know the dragons are the protectors of humankind from the foreboding Long Night. On the flip side, Raised by Wolves displays the main character as Mother, or Lamia, who is an android programmed with the ability to both create human life and to destroy it very easily. She and Father are programmed and entrusted to raise the last of mankind on a new planet when Earth is slowly destroyed by humans. Mother is programmed to be all-knowing, caring, and loving, and to raise the children with atheist beliefs, which encompass technocratic knowledge, so they rely upon themselves for survival, rather than a fictional god figure. However, Mother becomes impregnated by a sentient alien signal and gives birth to a powerful serpent, number seven. Amongst the heavy religious imagery and undertone to the story, we can see that Mother and Number Seven represent primordial life forces within a creation myth, which was essentially what Raised by Wolves was, a creation story on another planet, and a damn good one at that. So now you can start to see what I'm talking about. Two shows that encompass creation mythology, including Divine Feminine Wisdom and The Serpent. Dragons, serpents, worms, wyverns, they're all interchangeable, and there is also a huge effort to vilify the power they represent. Look at stories we are commonly told. Dragons who demand virgin sacrifices and are slain by holy knights, hoarding dragons living in smoking mountains or caves, or trickster serpents seducing women in the Garden of Eden. As you can see, so many of these stories are framed in a light to link the serpent influence of sacred knowledge to a divine feminine awakening. And historically speaking, that scares the crap out of men. This is the underlying message to the story of the Dance of the Dragons. Rhaenyra denied her divine rights as dragon queen because of the fears of common men. Now, while we might all find these shows harmless and entertaining, consider how the stories might have been received a few hundred years ago. Probably not so well. 
The stigma and habits of sexism linger in our culture, and maybe I'm wrong, but I can see how this may affect decisions made in Hollywood, or, you know, one of the most misogynistic places on earth. It's a huge message by HBO if they were to have not just one, but two shows embracing the divine feminine and her serpent consort. I have a sneaking suspicion that the real reason Raised by Wolves was canceled was because HBO already had all of their dragon eggs invested in the Thrones world and House of the Dragon was already in production. It seems like they had to choose a serpentine creature and goddess figure and the decision was already made back in 2019 when they started creating House of the Dragon. And while Raised by Wolves reigned as the number one show on HBO Max for a substantial amount of time and was one of their most successful shows to date, HBO knows how incredibly lucrative Game of Thrones was and what a goldmine House of the Dragon can be. Game of Thrones generated over $2 billion for HBO over its eight seasons. Let's be honest, Raised by Wolves just can't live up to that. The Martin World universe has the potential to expand even further. Before ordering House of the Dragon, there were rumors of a series based on the history of the North and the Starks, and another bringing the tales of Duncan Egg to the screen. This is just more money in the bank for HBO, and is something that Raised by Wolves cannot compete with. Raised by Wolves was one of the most creative, innovative, and gripping series I've ever seen. Every episode was more crazy than the last, and trust me, I am pissed that we won't find out what happens to Mother, or why Marcus was a reverse necromancer, or who or what the heck Soul was. We will likely have to wait for an animated series, further graphic novels, or books for the rest of this story. I will be patiently waiting, like Mother in the Sim Pod, for the glorious day Aaron Guzikowski announces how he will share the next part of this story with us. The Save Raised by Wolves movement is still very active and a petition is circulating to renew the show. I will link it in the description below. As Father told us, there is still hope. In the meantime, join some of the awesome groups on Facebook and Reddit to support this amazing story. What do you all think? Is there room for more than one dragon show on the same platform? Or was number seven a sacrifice to the old gods of Valyria? What show would you rather watch? Raised by Wolves or House of the Dragon? To be honest, based on the views on my channel, it seems like there are a lot more Raised by Wolves fans out there than those watching my House of the Dragons videos, so I am very interested in your feedback. Thank you all so much for watching, and be sure to subscribe to the channel for all the latest videos on both of these amazing shows, plus any other dragon mythology that we can discuss. I appreciate all of you for watching and listening to my dragon rants over here. I will never stop missing my baby number seven, and yes, HBO, I am still very mad at you over this. Anyways, let me know your thoughts in the comments below, and I'll see you all in the next one. Bye. Dracarys. Yeah.